So a question I get asked all the time is, can you change valve springs with the cylinder head still on the truck? And the answer is yes. Um, sometimes we'll do it this way if it's like a low mileage truck. Um, no reason to do the head gasket or anything like that. After the rocker pedestal is removed, um, basically you bolt on this tool. And this is one that I built years ago and should have patented the dang thing because you can buy them now. Um, but it allows you to compress both the valve springs at the same time to remove them. They also make these for 24 valves. Um, the other fitting I made is basically just a air chuck fitting that threads into an injector nut that I welded another bushing into. Um, so basically you can compress the cylinder with air that keeps the valves shut. You want to make sure when you do this that uh, the cylinder is at, or the pistons at top dead center. Um, that way if you accidentally do drop the valve, it doesn't drop all the way into the cylinder and then you have to remove the head to get it back. So very, very important. So then you put air to it. I'm um, only using 60 PSI. Our shop air is 175, but if you put that much to it, it'll force the piston down, rotating the engine. So if you don't have all your other valve train off, you can run into some problems. So once you put air to it, basically you just tighten this tool up very slowly until you hear the intake and exhaust valves open, and you'll hear air rushing out of the intake and the exhaust. Just like that. So once the valves are barely open, basically you got to pop these keepers loose from the valve stems. And you do that by tapping it. It'll make a goofy sound until they're loose. Basically then you just uh, tap them really lightly with a dead blow until you hear this kind of goofy sound go away. Just like that. Now when you tap it, it doesn't do it. I know it seems kind of scary. But if you don't get them broke loose, when you tighten this down, basically all it's going to do is just open the valves and uh, you're not going to get them loose. So now I can tighten them down, the valves stay closed because the air pressure is holding them closed. Once you've compressed the springs and the keepers down far enough, you get your little magnet and you pull out the keepers. Just like that. There's both of them. And put them in a magnetic tray like this guy. Um, that way you don't lose them. The keepers are off. Basically, you just loosen it back up. And keep in mind the valves are being held closed by air pressure. So you want to be careful not to hit these valves with anything and knock them down because then they'll lose that pressure and they'll drop. Now that the tool is all the way backed off, basically you just lift it up, pull your keepers off, pull your springs out. There you go. Now's a good time to do your valve stem seals also if you need to do them. We use these BD springs. That's the part number right there for uh, 89 or 88 to 98 12 valve. Um, and we buy two sets. We don't just do the exhaust, we do the intake also. Once you get your valve springs in place, don't crank this tool back down, and I'll show you why. So if your valves aren't lined up, when you push it down, it'll push the valve open, dropping it into the cylinder. So make sure your valve stems are lined up. Um, on both valves before you crank this tool down. It's especially hard on five and six. You gotta be really careful. Make sure that those are lined up before you crank it down. Once you're cranked back down, take your little keepers and drop them in here. What I like to use is a little screwdriver. Basically just make sure that they pop on like that. And then uh, you can release the pressure on the tool here and reseat those. That's it. So once those keepers are set and you've looked in there and made sure that they're in the correct place, then you can release your air. Pull that off of there and then uh, remove the tool. That's it. Put your rocker pedestal back on with your ARP. And on 12 valves, you have to machine the rocker pedestal 200 thousandths off of right here, and that's to give clearance for your valve cover. Otherwise, if you don't, the nut will hit the valve cover and it won't seal. So I don't like to have uh, these rockers off for extended periods of time. If you're not doing a head gasket like we did here, um, I would highly suggest finding somebody that has an extra set of pedestals and having them machined or buy a set through us. And uh, we can machine them. You can send yours back in for cores. That way you have them ready to go when you try this project. One thing that's really important when you're putting your ARPs in is clean the hole down inside the block. 
get all that oil out of there and everything because when you run the ARP down, you can actually hydraulic that oil and cause yourself some problems. One uh, common misconception is that these ARPs have an Allen head bolt, so people think that you have to just run them all the way down. Well, we run them all the way down, get them tight, but you don't leave them like this. If you do, you'll have problems. Once I run them down, then I back them off about a half a turn um, and leave them like this. This is very important. That's why the directions say to run them in by hand. If you run these studs all the way down and tighten them down, it pulls the stud down. And then when you put the nut on and you tighten it, you're pulling the stud the other direction. And what that can do is cause thread failure and uh, you could lose a head gasket. Or even worse, thread failure, broken studs, pull the threads out of your block, all kinds of bad stuff can happen. Also, take your ARP lube and lube the washers and the nuts very thoroughly uh, before you put them on. The next step is to torque these ARPs down. If you don't have a proper torque wrench, I uh, use Snap-on. It's uh, really the only thing I trust. Um, don't use an O'Reilly's rental torque wrench or anything like that. You, you're begging for it. Sometimes they pop like that. A little scary, but it's all right. There you go. The last thing I'll do is I'll do what's called line torquing. Instead of doing it in the pattern, which is just basically a big circle, I'll just go down the line on each bolt back and forth and check all the torques. Once the truck has been run and gone through a couple heat cycles, then what I'll do is I'll pull the valve covers and double check all the head bolts again. Um, wait for it to cool down first though, don't do this hot, um, and then do it in the correct torque sequence.